Grill Sergeant here, what's going on Grill Billies? In today's episode, we're tackling issues every new kettle owner gets extremely frustrated about. Let's start the show. All right, if you're new to charcoal barbecue or contemplating getting your first kettle, this video is for you. Or if you know someone who just got a new kettle, you might want to share this video with them. Or if you know someone who knows someone who Let's face it, there's nothing more frustrating than buying a brand new kettle and being totally disappointed on how the food came out. Now, if you've ever tasted food coming off of a kettle, you know it's so good, you just might never go back to propane again. Sorry, Hank Hill, propane sucks. You bastards! Charcoal grills and kettles come in all shapes and sizes, but whatever you have, the advice in this video is going to be universal. Now, before we dive in, if you're new to this channel, at the end of this video, if you found the information helpful, I'd ask you hit that subscribe button and like button to stay on top of all our barbecue adventures. We're a barbecue community here, and I'd love for you to join us along. All right, let's dive in. When it comes to charcoal, you pretty much have two options. You have lump and you have briquette. Now pit masters and backyard barbecue warriors will have their preference on the two, but most will agree there's a proper way to light your charcoal and most beginners make this mistake, using lighter fluid. Now, if you walk into any department store, you have your charcoal barbecues and you have your lighter fluid right there. So you would think, hey, they go hand in hand, right? Wrong. Now, the whole reason you ditched propane for charcoal barbecue is to get away from that chemical taste. Using lighter fluid can impart chemical off flavors into your barbecue. Ugh. To fix this issue, what you're gonna need is a charcoal chimney. Now, how this works is you fill it up with your charcoal that you're gonna use for your barbecue, and you can either put newspaper or a chemical-free fire starter underneath and in about 15 to 20 minutes, your charcoal is gonna be screaming hot and ready for use. Next mistake is not getting fully lit. No, I'm not talking about recreational marijuana. I'm talking about not giving your coals enough time to heat up before you dump them into your kettle. I remember my first barbecue, we invited a bunch of friends over, I got a bunch of ribeye steaks, and I heated up my charcoal chimney for about five to 10 minutes. I dumped them in, and the coals went out. I was so embarrassed. We even had to finish the steaks on a propane grill. <laughs> the key to fixing this mistake is giving enough time for your charcoal to get screaming hot. In a charcoal chimney, that usually takes 15 to 20 minutes. Now a dead giveaway, if you see white ash on the top of your coals, you know they're ready to dump. If you do it before then, there's a good chance that your coals can actually go out because they're not properly lit. All right, now that you got your charcoal screaming hot, it's time to just dump them in, right? Wrong. Well, not really, but it really helps understanding direct and indirect heat zones on your kettle. If you're doing hot dogs or burgers or quick cook, sure, dump them in the middle, spread them around, you're good to go. But where the kettle shines is understanding your heat zones. Let's look under the grill. If you are doing a quick cook, yes, you can basically just pour them out all in the center, put your burgers, hot dogs on top, they're good to go. But they do make charcoal baskets, and if you don't have charcoal baskets, you can actually bank your coals to one side. But what really helps is actually making a hot zone, which is underneath the charcoal, and then making an indirect heat zone, which is apart from the coals. So if I was cooking a big steak, there's a method known as reverse searing, and I can actually put the steak on this side, and the heat is gonna come from here, and it's gonna rise up, and with the kettle shape, it's actually going to inductively cook your steak, and you're basically bringing it up to the temperature you want, and then right before it comes up to temperature, I'll take it and I'll flip it now on the hot side to basically give those nice sear marks and give that nice char on that steak, and then I'll pull it. Another method what you can do is you can actually take your charcoal basket and put it in the center, and you could put your barbecue wings all around the kettle shape. Again, they'll be cooking indirectly, and you could do that for maybe an hour or two, 
and then right before you take them off, you can put the wings in the center of the grill and give that nice crispy char to them and your wings are gonna be killer. Now there is another method called the snake method and you actually build what looks like a charcoal snake around the edge of your kettle and instead of having them all lit, you're only going to light one end. And this is for when you're doing barbecue low and slow. So if I have say two racks of ribs right here, I'll light one end of my charcoal snake and that will slowly burn, giving me those low temperatures like 225, 250. And that will burn for about six, seven hours, enough time for me to slow cook ribs. Now I will post a link in the description and that video will show you all the different types of cooking methods you can do on your kettle. And it really helps understanding what you're trying to cook because your kettle is going to make that food come out so much better if you understand those heat zones. All right, now that you have an understanding of heat zones, when you put your coals in, the next mistake you don't wanna do is putting your food on right away. The reason being is if you put your meat on a cold grate that eventually starts heating up, the proteins in your meat will actually stick to the grate itself. If you give some time for your kettle to heat up, usually 10, 15 minutes, the grate will be warm enough to that when you throw your steaks on, you won't have your meat stick to the grill. Now, usually what I'll do is I'll let the grill come up to temperature and then I'll take a grill brush, I'll wipe the grate down, and if you want, you can take a little rag with some cooking oil on it and basically wipe down the grates really quick and that will give a nice non-stick surface. So make sure your kettle is heated up before you put the food on and you'll be good to go. Now the next mistake comes in the form of a question and yet it gets asked all the time. How long is something going to take to cook? Now I get it, that question actually seems very innocent. But what you have to understand when it comes to barbecue, there are so many variables. What's the outside temperature? What fuel source are you using? What was the temperature of your meat? There are so many variables when it comes to barbecue that it's better to go by temperature rather than time. What you're gonna need to do is basically get a barbecue thermometer and you're gonna put it into the center of your meat and you're going to pull it whenever that meat comes up to the temperature that you want it. You can come up with estimates of how long things take to cook, but to get really consistent results, you're cooking to temperature and not by time. I've been doing barbecue for who knows how long, but still my wife will be like, how long is it gonna take? How long is it gonna take? And I'm like, it's ready when it's ready, girl. Come on now. So if you want consistent results over and over again, get yourself a barbecue thermometer and you'll be good to go. Now there's a saying in barbecue that goes like this. If you're looking, it ain't cooking. What that means is keep your lid on as much as you can. How a kettle works is you basically, you have all this heat and smoky goodness trapped inside. And so when you go to lift your lid to you know check on your meat, take Instagram photos, whatever, all that heat and smoke that you spent so hard to build up now just went adios, hasta luego, literally see you later. To avoid that, keep your lid closed. Now you might be saying, how do I know if my food's gonna be done or not? And that's when you rely on your temperature probes. Now, if you wanna bring your barbecue game up to the next level, introducing hardwood smoke with your charcoal is a great place to start. Hardwood smoke and meat go hand in hand. But the mistake here is just throwing on any wood that you can find. Hardwood comes in all varieties, and on the back of the bag, it will usually state what meat that wood is good for. Now, a wood that's good for beef might not necessarily be good for fish, so you do want to pay attention to what hardwood you're putting on, but the cool thing is you can actually mix different hardwoods to get a unique flavor that's custom to what you like. I'll give you an example. When I'm cooking ribs, I like using hickory wood and cherry wood. That gives a nice smoke flavor. It is so good. Now, before we get into the next mistake, I need a vent. No, not me personally, my charcoal vent. Your kettle has vents on both the bottom and the top, and it really helps to understand how to use those vents. The main gist of understanding the vents is your charcoal needs to breathe. Now, how much you let it breathe depends on how hot it gets. If the bottom and top vents are fully open, your charcoal is gonna be screaming hot because there's a lot of oxygen passing through. But when you start to actually close those vents, 
that temperature actually starts to drop. Now, if you open your top and bottom vents halfway, your charcoal will get less oxygen and it will cook at a lower temperature. And it will actually cook longer because you're not burning up the fuel source as fast. Now let's talk about when you're done barbecuing. You take the food off and you're enjoying it. Now the big mistake here is letting that unused charcoal that's in your kettle go to waste. What you can do is you can fully shut off the top and bottom vent. That is going to kill the fire on the inside of your barbecue. Now, whatever doesn't burn off, you can actually reuse and you can put that in your chimney and then put new charcoal on top and then use that. So for your next cook, you're actually using less charcoal than if you were to just put brand new charcoal in again. So save the charcoal that you don't use. All right, last step, and this is a huge one, is know who you're cooking for. Now, if you're cooking for yourself and you know what temperatures you like on your steak, go for it. So I've made the mistake of, you know, cooking to what I like and then serving it and for the guest to actually be afraid because they think it's too undercooked. So before you put your steaks on, it does help to ask how they like their steaks cooked too. Everyone has a preference. Some like it rare, medium rare, medium, medium well, well, well done. And if they like it well done, you can probably just escort them out of your house because they're not gonna be friends that you wanna be with anyway. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you did have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'd be happy to answer them. I do hope you felt that this video was informational. And if you haven't already, do hit that subscribe and like button. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, Grill Sergeant out, cheers.